Hi. This video is what I did not know about Christmas and Christians as a Jehovah's Witness. So here's my, my list. One, that not all Christians actually celebrate Christmas. And two, that Christians who celebrate Christmas do not all celebrate in the same way. Three, that Christians are allowed to research the subject of Christmas themselves and not from a mandated single source. Four, that Christians are encouraged to train and follow their own conscience on how they view special days. Five, celebrating or not celebrating the birth of Christ is not a disfellowshipping offense in Christian churches. Six, your decision is not held against you or for you as to your standing before God. Seven, for most Christians, if not all, it is not about giving and getting gifts or Santa Claus. Eight, Christian Christmas celebrations are not riotous drinking or partying. Nine, secular celebrations and traditions about Christmas are not the same as Christians' celebrations and traditions. Ten, the date is not what is being celebrated. Although scholarship does not rule out the possibility of a winter date. Eleven, Christmas celebrations involve more than a single date. Advent season, which I had never heard about when I was a witness. I knew nothing about Advent, what that meant. Advent is uh, the remembrance of the birth of Christ, but it extends from weeks before the actual date of Christmas and, and past that these celebrations go on. And that event is viewed as something to be remembered because it changed the world. Twelve, I did not know the amount of time that was given to prayer, worship, praise, and meditation of scripture during this season for Christians. Thirteen, the whole season honors the Father, the Son, and the work of the Holy Spirit. So here is just uh, some of my own thoughts about or questions that I think we should ask if we're Jehovah's Witnesses, if we're ex-witnesses. Is the celebration of Christmas a deal breaker for you as a Jehovah's Witness or as an ex-witness? Should it be? Why does the watchtower make it so? Even Jehovah's Witnesses viewed it differently in the space of their relatively short history. No Christmas only became a rule after Russell and into Rutherford's era. Second, uh, the last thing I wanted to say is why should whether you celebrate the birth of Christ or not be a factor as to whether or not you are a Christian? Then I would say the guideline that I would use would be Paul. Paul Paul's guidance to the Roman church in Romans 14 is very useful for thought as to how you're going to judge dates and activities in worship. So I'm going to read the whole of chapter 14. Receive one who is weak in the faith, 
but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who is weak eats only vegetables. Let him not eat not let him who eats let not him who eats despise him who does not eat, and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats, for God has received him. Who are you to judge another's servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand, for God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day, to the Lord he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. For he gives God thanks, and he who does not eat, to the Lord he does not eat, and gives God thanks. For none of us lives to himself, and no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For he, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give an account of himself to God. Therefore let us not judge one another any more but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. I know that I'm, I am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself, but to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved of men by men. Therefore let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food. All things indeed are pure but it is evil for the man who eats with offense. It is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles, or is offended, or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. Happy is he who does not condemn himself in what he approves. But he who doubts is condemned if he eats, because he does not eat from faith. For whatever is not from faith is sin. I'm going to, to link to two videos. The first one is JW's Unity is Rutherford's Uniformity Enforced. Where's Conscience? 
And that was based on some readings we were doing of Ray Franz's work in, in Christian Freedom, Search of Christian Freedom book. The second link is, as JWs, we did not leave judgment to God. Only God qualified to judge lives and hearts. And that was based on reviewing material from C.S. Lewis's book, Mere Christianity.